thank you very much, Irene. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, all the Boku team. Yes. This conference is great. So uh, yesterday talks were amazing, diverse, fun. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to present here. I'm going to try to to connect some of the ideas we heard yesterday to some of the ideas I'm bringing. I think that's part of what is great about this conference, that there is a lot of connections and potential collaboration between people and uh, tools and platforms and frameworks. And this is the, the subject of, of my talk, actually. It's about collaboration. And being more specific, I'm going to present a framework and a platform for collaboration, right? Um, and I am super thrilled because basically today, I will say this is the, is the starting point for a process that will take some time, but it's already running, but today it, somehow it becomes public, and it's a pleasure to, 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 to introduce these ideas uh, to such an audience and in, in, in this great conference is the perfect place to talk about this. So the idea is that, in short, uh, I and a small team have been working on a framework for a lot of years, a lot of people uh, building on it, and we, we, are, we have been also working on a, on a great platform to sketch projects and to produce projects and for collaboration, and we want these two to be open, to become open, okay? So it's going to be a process, and, and I'm going to talk to you about, a little bit about that process. I'm going to introduce both the framework and the platform we call Like It. The other great thing is that we're going to have the, the help of Boku on this process, okay? So we are super happy, and we know that accompanied by Boku, we're going to move probably slow, but in the right direction and, and not making at least huge mistakes. Okay, so um, what I expect, what we expect is to, to start collaborating with a small community that will grow, right? Enthusiasts that, that will start playing, will start using it, uh, taking value out of it, and then eventually early adopters, etc. So let's talk about first the framework. The framework is a JavaScript framework, okay? It's not exactly a data visualization framework, but it's created to help in the, in the creation of, of data visualization projects. So what's on it? It, it contains, the, the main thing it contains is a, is a set of data models I will uh, introduce now. A lot of geometry, statistics, and math uh, methods. It has a very simple 3D engine. It has a very simple physics engine, especially useful for representing networks. It has uh, data models for networks and a lot of methods and ways to deal, to deal with networks. It has some data science, and the plan is to continue growing in that direction. I'm going to speak more about that. It, ha it deals with formats, so it imports and exports different formats. It's not complete, but the, the basis is already uh, created. Okay? And it has a lot of conversions. That is, there, there are many ways to, to convert a data model into another data model. So th those data models create a sort of ecosystem. I'm going to talk more about that. And finally, it has a simple graphics library, which is not so different, probably more simple, than P5GS or 2GS that were introduced yesterday. It's about helping people with simple functions to draw in the canvas in this case. So that's the framework. If you know some of my projects, you, you will better understand what's about, what can be built. Today I'm going to show just one project that somehow features different aspects of the framework. So what's not on it is not a library of visualization methods. It doesn't contain visualization methods. Instead, it tries to help whenever you want to visualize something using rectangles or circles or projecting in space, it has all the math already solved for you, or not all, but a lot. So 
it, it helps creating new visualization methods. It doesn't have any, uh, anything of HTML, CSS, SVG. It's, it's pure JavaScript and, and let's say mathematical JavaScript, okay? Not dealing with the DOM. Good. So what's really special in the, in the, in the framework? I think it's the ecosystem of data models. It's what makes it, let's say, different or special or that's the identity, the character of the, of the framework. So this is a very raw uh, scheme that shows different da data models present in the framework. The idea is to keep the list of data models short so you always work with, with one of these, or not always, you are not necessarily constrained to this, but most of the time you work with this, and there are many ways to jump from one to the other. So this relation means that uh, orange means that a, a rectangle list contains rectangles, right? So con uh, orange means contains. Blue uh, means uh, transformations. You can transform a polygon into a number table and the other way around. So it has many uh, conversions between different models and green means inheritance, okay? So a polygon is a list, it's a list of points. So there, there is like an internal logic going on and when you get to understand it, you become very efficient working with the, with the framework. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, another characteristic is that most of the methods build new data models, so they do not transform. They build new things all the time. So you always have all the data models, all the process uh, accessible, and you can combine them, etc. So this, this framework have be, has been like uh, constructed uh, in the last four years in JavaScript, but it started like 10 years ago in ActionScript. So there is a logic, it has been tested in so many projects, and it's especially, I think it's especially meant for, for interactive data visualization. Even if the framework itself doesn't contain too many interactive methods or methods to help on interaction, it is, it is meant to, to, to work with dynamic data in that sense. It can be transformed, it can be filtered, and you keep this, the story of all the data models, so it, it is really good for interaction, okay? Good. One example, just one project, uh, that somehow contains uh, or, or displays some of the ideas or, 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 the, or the powers inside the framework. So this is a, a herbal, non, based on notes and links. Um, scatter plot, connector scatter plot, and a lot of connected scatter plot. So it's like uh, 500 companies. X axis is for uh, earnings, Y axis is for taxes, and you have for, for each company, you have a little story, right? Like Apple, let's say Microsoft. Um, different companies have different stories in the, in the scatter plot, right? Uh, you can choose the, the time range. Um, let's keep it yeah, four years. And then you can try to find other companies that have similar patterns. So this focuses on the pattern, not on the exact position, okay? It's more the story about uh, the changes from, from earning more and more and then earning less and paying less taxes, then start paying more taxes. So it's, it's about the patterns of, of behavior throughout time. And if I click on Apple, I will find other companies that have similar patterns. So it's not only representation, it's also the interaction is very important. And how, how to, for instance, find patterns, uh, in this case, via bidimensional correlation. It's a correlation more based on angles than in values, but it finds patterns. Actually, you can draw your own pattern if you want, and it will find the companies that follow that pattern, okay? So these kind of functionalities that are closer to, to more uh, analytical processes, you have a lot in the, in the framework, right? And then you can do things such as visualize small multiples, find clusters in the data, um, so it will analyze all possible combinations and find the, the groups that make sense together, uh, Network analysis, network visualization, etc. Not network visualization, but more like network analysis, uh, building the networks, and then make very easy to draw a network. 
That's, that's the point. Not really, you won't find a visualization method for networks here. But visualizing network could be very fast at first, okay? So again, you can change the time range and the, the network will be reconfiguring in different ways. So you see, you can actually modify a network. You don't have to change network. This kind of processes you find in the, in the framework. Okay, that was the framework. But maybe more interesting and, uh, and, and probably more useful for more people is Lycan, which is a platform for collaboration that it's currently based on the framework, but it doesn't have to be that way. It, it could use uh, other frameworks. Let me explain. So for that, I'm gonna do a very simple demo here. So this is it, this is Lycan. <laughs> so you have a menu, right? Where to uh, a search, a menu where to search. So let's say I want to create a network, a random network, because instead of loading a file that describes a network that could be possible, I'm gonna create a random network. And I have some methods here. So where Lycan finds those methods? Basically in the framework that builds Lycan. So it's like Lycan is reading its own, the framework that is used to create itself, okay? So I don't have to specify things outside the, 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 the framework. It's, it really reads the JavaScript code and find the methods and create uh, the access throughout the menu, right? And if the method is well documented, you have all the information you need to use, in this case, this, this simple model. So number of nodes, and probability that two nodes will be connected, and that builds a network. So I have a network in this side. Okay, so I can continue the flow. Good. So what, what can I do? So if in the framework there's no visualization methods, what, what we do have are several visualization methods that are basically projects built with the framework. And we call those uh, external models. So I'm gonna load one of these using the external module. And it's called network viz. It's in, uh, right now it's local. It's in the, in the same folder as Lycan. So that's why I didn't have to type an entire URL. But the, the external module is meant to, to load any website, anything on the internet. That's the interesting thing about the external module. So if I, for instance, go here and use the openbizconf URL, I will load the, the website of the, of the OpenBiz conference, right? So, but obviously this is not a model I can use for any data process. So how to convert this in, into a model that actually can be useful? I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch that subject later, okay? So let's erase this, let's visualize the network and it's, it's just that, okay? Then very important, modules have inlets and outlets. So information can go inside and can go outside. In this case, those, all those uh, outlets describe possible interactions with nodes and relations. So you can continue the visualization outside the network. So if I read this one, is the, is the, that's the, the rollover node. So if I roll over a node, this one will become black because it contains information, okay? So let's, let's do something with that. A very, another very important module is the GS box. So you can code in JavaScript here, okay? So it's easy for coders that want to build simple functions here. So if, if I receive a node, this can just return, very simple, the ID of the node, for instance. And then I can use a text box just to display this, this ID. Okay. 
So it's, it's super simple. Okay, obviously, this can grow in complexity and, and become much more interesting. And I will show you a more interesting, more complex spaces, right, built on this, on this platform. Okay. So, as I mentioned, it visualizes its own code. It reads, it's like a bootstrap, it's, it is really, really reading the classes that build, build it and identify methods and put it on the menu. But you can load your own framework. So it doesn't have to be the Moebio framework. It could be any other framework. It's better if you docu document the methods because that way you will find in the platform the methods with the documentation. But if not, it's okay. It's also possible to work. And it's about collaboration. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about collaboration now and, and, and why we envision this, this tool as being a, colla a real collaborative tool. What, what are the opportunities here? So first of all, we envision collaboration between developers. That's more or less easy because that is already happening all the time. And also in, in, in Moebio, where Moebio is, is a small team of people right now, and we actually use Lycan to build projects, and, and as you will see, different developers build different modules in different places, and they connect very well, so it's very easy to assemble complex projects in which very different people from different uh, places, without necessarily having interacted, uh, generate things that, that combine very well, so between developer, developers, it's clear, but then it could be also useful for users that do not know to code but want to use different resources on the internet. For instance, different visualization methods or interactive controls or data science processes. And they want to build, they want to build things by combining those resources. So right now, that's very difficult. Only developers can do that, that kind of combination. For many reasons. For the starter, there's no protocol for connecting things, right? You need to code to build this, this connection, okay? So we want, we want users to, to collaborate and to, to build new things. We want collaboration between dev developers and users. We want collaboration between data visualization and data science. I'm gonna point a little bit, show a final example on, on that. Uh, between data scientists and managers, executives in company, we, we want to foster that communication, and this platform helps to build processes that you can tune in real time and, and affect models, etc. Um, and collaboration between different tools, languages, and frameworks, right? So, that ends. Right now, um, when when people build solutions, for instance, visualization methods, such as this great uh, open project called Pivot Table, yes, which is basically a way to visualize tables, but in a very interactive way, it, it allows people to pivot the features of the table and to build new tables. So when people create these kind of beautiful projects and things, and they are generous because this project is actually in GitHub, so they want to share, they, they expect other developers to maybe extend the code. We, we have heard a lot uh, about these processes yesterday. But again, only developers could use this in a way it can connect with other things. Normal users could eventually attach their own data to this visualization and analytical uh, uh, widget. But they cannot combine it. It's just connect data, and it stops over there. We think it's very easy to transform this into something that can actually be connected with other things and no code uh, required. So I'm going to explain it later. So this is what I call dead ends. And Look all the potentiality to connect this in, in, the two, in the two directions. First of all, receiving data, obviously. Um, it receives a table. So the, the inlet is very clear, but the outlet is also clear because 
whenever a user makes a combination, uh, pivots the table using certain f features against other features, uh, they generate a new table. So this could be a result that could be eventually connected with other processes or other visualization, further analysis, etc. So it will be awesome to, to, to being able to, to do that. But right now, only coders, again, right? So I call this dead ends. And in general, um, that's how developers, even developers that want to share and that, that want their, their, their developments being used by a broad community, build things, right? So that's why I call this, this culture of, developer, of, of products being developed by developers as dead ends, right? So, how to bring the collaborative culture of developers to users? That's the point. We have developers that collaborate a lot with platforms such as GitHub. They interchange code, they modify code of others, they, they open their code. So, it's, it's a great community, but then outside this frontier of, of, of knowing how to code, users can only just use some of the results these developers are building. How to make the users part of, of this story as well. So that, that, that's a model, a simple model of how it could look if we open collaboration between users and developers. So this, the, the clusters right now is just one single cluster of developers, a big cluster of developers. But in the moment you open collaboration with the, with the users community, which is actually potentially bigger, like new clusters appear and that are more diverse, but that are also interconnected. So it's a more interesting structure, right? It's like another level of complexity. And that's what we expect. So we have been reading a lot of books about collaboration and taking a lot of ideas from biology, also companies, systemic thinking, history of innovation, and and there are a lot of ideas and methodologies and common things that happen in, in, collabor in collaborative structures. So we are relying on many of those ideas to, to build a platform that really foster collaboration. So one of the, of the key things of, of this platform is obviously modularity. So what can you do? Now, now I'm going towards the, the technical and pragmatical issues. So this pivot table, for instance, how to convert this, this fantastic visualization into something that connects. So our proposal and what we use in, the, in this Lycan platform uh, requires that a website or a visualization such as pivot table contain just these three functions available in, in the global scope, and only with that it will work. So, you need a send ready message that will be triggered in the moment the, 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 the website or, or visualization uh, has been completely loaded. And then a receive data function and a send data function. And that's all. Okay? And only with that, you can convert something that is a dead end in something that can flow and can be connected with other results. Okay? We have been studying a lot of modularity as well, obviously, and finding a lot of examples in nature, in culture, in different scales, and, and being inspired by, by this, like this animated GIF, I can change speed. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna jump to, to more complex examples in Lycan, uh, and also to to point some of the ideas I presented and how they work here, okay? So this is information about uh, bank transactions. It's time series, yes, and categorical data. Different services throughout time, different days, boring data, but it has sort of very interesting structure, a time structure. It has rhythm, right? So when we, this is just one day. When we visualize this at first, we, we immediately realize, and, and not only us, but all, more people when looking at this thought on music immediately. So we decide to run a, a parallel experiment of how to sonorize this. So we ask a, a developer that, that works with sound, 
in JavaScript to build a very simple module that will re just receive a, a list of times, right? So it's a number list, points in space, and with other parameters, we'll, we'll just play the sound of this time series. And in a way, it will be easy to synchronize graphically and eventually timely to other modules. So the good thing is that this developer doesn't know anything about Lycan. We asked Kim to put uh, these three functions I mentioned before in its model. He placed it on, on his own server, and we connected, and it worked immediately. And then we sent the result to him, and it was like, OK, that's interesting, because I built something very small, and then I receive a bigger context in which my model works. So this works. <laughs> It's just sound, right? And different tones associated with different categories. Super simple, but it works well. And actually, we presented this to the, to the client, because this is a client project. And he liked it very much, and he thought it were to give it a try as an actual visualization sonorization method that could eventually give, give some insight. Because of this, as these people know very well the data, Maybe listening to different days or different hours, they can somehow recon recognize or, or identify strange patterns, for instance. We are just playing. Uh, we don't know what will, could happen with this, but it's an, an interesting experiment. So this is a song loop, right? So I'm going to play a little bit here. Do you remember this from yesterday? <laughs> So I'm going to load so strangely. Sometimes behave so strangely. And what else I can load here? Sometimes behave so strangely. Sometimes behave so strangely. Besides jokes and, and fun, thinking on patatap. I, yesterday I made the question about how to somehow enable this fantastic project, patatap, to connect and enable users, not only developers, to do great things. Now, patatap receives very basic uh, uh, stimuli, it's like keys. It, it's very easy to just add this function, uh, receive data to patatap, that will just um, overlap the, 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 the key functionality. So if someone loads that project in this platform, and it doesn't have to be this particular platform, just following the protocol, the methodology, it could send new signals to patatap and use it in a completely different project without coding. That's the potentiality. And patatap also delivers data in different ways, like images, those icons that pop up, or sound signals. So it could be an outlet also. So send data again. And Patata will become a resource that is open in a different new way, not just open for coders, also for users. So one, one comment here, you see this code? This is strange code here is, is a layout code. It's a sort of CSS to choose some of the boxes of the modules and to build a layout, placing, placing those boxes in the, in the window. I'm, I'm going to show you an example of how, how to build a, a, a layout. Um, but now I want to go here because I want to show you how pivot table has been actually modified to, to be a model. So what we did, this was uh, Danny uh, from Moebio Labs, that this, this, and it took him like maybe one hour or two hours 
But if Nicolas, the original developer of this resource, uh, for him, if he, he will try to, to connect, it will be like immediate because he knows the code. So add this receive data and this send data will be for him like a no-brainer, right? To Danny, it took more because it, it was in his project, but he managed to somehow connect and create this inlet called table. So now we can introduce any data. It's the same. It's, this is the transactional data. And then we haven't finished this, this model yet, but it, it will it will make a lot of sense to also deliver a table, which is the table you build by interacting here, by combining, pivoting different uh, features. So, and pivot table will not longer be at the end. It will be something that can be used in a, in a more complex project, in a more complex uh, flow, right? Um, let me go back to the presentation. So if you want to be notified about the, all the plans for opening a Moebio framework and Lichen, please go to my website and you will see there is the, the project Lichen is over there. You click on it and then you, you can just subscribe to a mailing list. So that's what we have for the time being. But again, things will be moving slower, but we'll be moving. So little by little, we'll be opening access to, to more and more people and and delivering parts of the, of the code, working along with uh, Boku, it's almost guaranteed that, that the code will deliver its, its high quality code and it makes sense and could be really used. So just for finish, and then we can go to questions. I think it's, it's a good idea to, to extend the questions time. Um, this is a project built with, the, with Lichen. So obviously all these boxes uh, in the platform look like a sparse concept in uh, uh, boxes or, or visualizations or, or interactive tools in the, in, the, in the big space, right? And then they are connected and they are connected with code, me methods, etc. With this layout code, we build this, right? So this is a project for a car manufacturer in Europe and they have, this is a lot of data, at least it's a lot of data for the client. It's more than 100,000 100, data points about people buying cars, okay? And we have a lot of information for, from all those people here. So the first iteration we built for the client in Lichen was a space where they could explore by filtering, following a lot of different criteria. So you can filter data by, by age, by gender, by the maker, of the car, this person bought, or the family, or the model. And also they have very interesting data about what car this person had in the past, and what car this person wanted to buy, and what car this person actually ended up buying. With that uh, triplet of cars, we built very interesting networks. They, there are somehow churn networks, because it shows how some people want to buy a car but ended up buying another. This network is basically the network of the market. But then in this, in this iteration, working in this first iteration, working with the client, uh, they became very anxious about finding interesting combination of filtering. As the number of filtering is, 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 very, is, is really big, and they, they were trying to find, for instance, particular cases in which churn is very low or particular cases in which churn is very high, uh, we decided to go to a more complex uh, develop, development and using, using some uh, prediction models. In this case, it's a decision tree that basically what it does is to find the, the most important variables whenever you want to predict something. But again, instead of following an, an analytical process, creating an, a result from the model, and then delivering to the, to the marketing team that will be more or less the, the, the standard procedure. What we did is to allow them to build their own models or at least to tune their own models, starting by deciding what, why they want, what are the variables they want to predict, right? So the table contains a lot of uh, features and they can 
choose which, which is the one, which are the one they want to predict, and then which are the one they want to use to predict these other variables. So this combination uh, already is very powerful for them. They can play a lot. Uh, and then they can choose the country in which they want to predict, or as in this case, it's like all the countries are selected. So they can also narrow the, the table they will use for the prediction, etc. And then with that, this visualization method gives an idea. In this case, the, the predictive, the, the supervised variable is female. So we want to predict uh, if, if the buyer of a car is a, is a female or not. Right? We want to predict gender. And for that particular task, the decision tree tells the marketing team that the most important feature is the price. So if you go to these uh, cheaper cars, you will see that the probability of, of, of the buyer being a woman is, is higher. It, the, the lift here is almost two. So almost twice as, as likely that, that the buyer is a woman than the average, right? And the opposite, the, the very expensive cars are very likely to be bought by, by men. But then, this is just the first variable. Then you can navigate, for instance. After prices, it seems that country, in certain cases, is the most important, and in other cases, it's ages. If we go to countries, we go deeper, etc. So, And we can find pockets in which probabilities are very high or very low. All the pockets are organized here. So this is, this is a vis uh, predictive analysis visualization. But the good thing is that it has been built to foster collaboration within a team. In this case, marketing team with more analytical people in the company. And it is working very well. So it's also part of the, of the aims of the, of the platform to start combining, uh, uh, adding more data science to it. A layer of data science that will run on the client, on JavaScript, which is obviously not enough for, for, for very hard tasks. But then we are also adding a, a data science capabilities in, on the server. So it's, it's very easy to create models that co communicate with services in, in a server. So we already have some, some uh, models, or, or we have linked uh, frameworks such as uh, Pandas from Python, and models allow to, to communicate. And what you feel is like you are doing everything on the client. It goes back and forth, it works very, very well. So we have also a methodology for these cases in which we sample from, from let's say we have a very big table, impossible to load out all the data points to the client. We sample, we allow the user to, users to, to generate their own models, and they, if they are satisfied, the specification of the model, the parameters go back to the server, and the real model is calculated on the server, and then the results come back. So you use client to, to be very fast on that part of the, of the process uh, of, of building, creating new models, etc. So that's, that's why we also think this platform has been a collaborative platform between visualization and, and data science. And as you have seen, the idea is to create flows. So it's no longer one single visualization as the end input or one single analysis. This, this itself can be connected with, with, uh, with more visualization, more than, uh, analysis, et cetera. So this is to show you a more complex project that we, are, we have actually already delivered to an actual client. So it works. Uh, right now, to export a project, you actually do not export it. It's linked to, to the core of, of Lycan. But in the, in the, in the near future, we plan to allow people to export their projects. So they, they will be completely autonomous. If they use Lycan, for instance, they will export something that it's just a, an autonomous folder that they, they can uh, publish on, on their servers. That's, that's the idea. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.